Hey, what is going on guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over how to improve your game sense in Fortnite. Game sense is without a doubt the most underappreciated skill in the entire game. And the main reason why it's so underrated is because it's really hard to recognize when someone actually has great game sense. You can watch Phase Sway or Razor X and tell right away that those guys are insane builders and editors. You can watch Sculpt or Nick Merckx and tell right away that they have insane aim. But when it comes to players with pro level game sense, you need to really pay attention and dissect their gameplay to recognize some of the high IQ things that they do. And what I really like about game sense is that there's no mechanical skill required, so I feel like it's something that anyone can improve if they go about it the right way, and that's kind of the purpose of this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first tip that I want to give to improve your game sense involves watching other good players. Now on a very basic level, it should be fairly obvious that watching great players play is gonna make you smarter. That isn't anything groundbreaking. By watching great players, you get to see what they do in certain situations, and then you can take what you just witnessed and try to do the same thing when you find yourself in a similar scenario. But the truth about this that a lot of people won't tell you is that just watching good players play really isn't enough. If you're just laying back in a chair with your feet kicked up and maybe you're on your phone at the same time, you can be quote unquote watching a good player play, but you probably aren't going to learn too much from their gameplay. Now don't get me wrong, it's totally fine to watch players just for entertainment. I'm not trying to be some crazy person saying, no, 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 you gotta focus 100% on every little thing they do. But when your main goal is to learn from a player, it's obviously gonna be much more effective if you actually focus and really pay attention. And I want to share a sort of interesting way to really learn when watching someone play, analyzing and critiquing their decisions in real time. A lot of people mistake mistakenly believe that Fortnite pros are so smart and because of that they never make bad decisions. That really isn't true at all. Not every bad decision will result in a death, but even the smartest players mess up on a fairly frequent basis. So when you're watching someone play, especially if it's a live stream because in that situation you'll see everything that happens, try to analyze each major play that they make before the results actually occur. For example, when they decide to push someone one mid game, think to yourself, is this a smart play? Should he be doing this? Does he have any better options? What would I do in this situation? When you get in the habit of constantly questioning plays from great players, you basically get to practice your game sense even when you aren't playing the game. And if you can start to identify and recognize when really good players make a bad play even before it ends up going bad, that's a really good sign that your game sense is drastically improving. On the flip side, whenever a really good play happens, you also want to try to understand why that play ended up working. Don't just think, oh man, that two-piece by Wolfies was so insane, he's so good. Try to go deeper than that and understand the specific things he did that made the insane play possible. Now, watching other players play the game is great and all, but obviously, you also want to watch and review your own gameplay. In a lot of Fortnite fights, you have a million different things going on simultaneously. And because of that, you're going to miss certain things unless you go back and watch it over again. Now trust me here, you don't need to go all John Gruden on Monday Night Football about it with the slow-mo footage and the little tool that allows you to circle things on the screen. It really is as simple as just going into replay mode and watching certain parts of the last game. Or even better, since replay mode is super buggy and annoying to navigate, you can always just take clips of things that happen directly through your PS4 or Xbox. Before I was able to record my screen with OBS, that's something I I actually used to do really frequently. I know on Xbox you can make your clips record anything from the last 15 seconds all the way up to the last two minutes I believe, and I'm sure on PS4 it's pretty similar. So anytime I died and I wasn't really sure what exactly led to it or what I did wrong, i take a clip. On Xbox you can watch the clip as soon as you record it, so I'd do exactly that, and a lot of times I'd catch things I did wrong that I wasn't able to recognize when it happened live because I was so focused on something else. 
Now, the only negative of this compared to replay mode is that you can only see the clip from your perspective, and in some situations, you might want to zoom out and look around to see where other people were positioned. But that's definitely rare, and I'd say just clipping it is a fine way to VOD review unless you're super serious about it. The next crucial element of improving your game sense is playing multiple different game modes. The truth is, playing solos and playing squads are actually two entirely different experiences. In general, regular solo matches definitely require the least amount of game sense to be successful. Since you're mostly just running into one player at a time, the fights that you're going to be involved in are much more straightforward, so to say. Sure, you'll get third party from time to time and have to deal with some awkward situations involving rotations and such, but that's typically nothing compared to what you'll encounter in a game mode like squads. In a 4v4 or 3v3 fight in Fortnite, there are so many different variables that you need to worry about. You basically need to know the position of all seven players other than yourself in that fight. On top of that, it's important to track things like which skins are weak, how much health your teammates have, if any enemies are knocked and can potentially be getting revived. Those are all really important aspects of game sense that just don't get tested in solos unless it's like a stacked end game or something. And when you really think about it, your success in team game modes versus solos is a pretty decent indicator of how good your game sense already is. If you really struggle in solos and you're much better in team modes, it's not guaranteed, but in most cases, that means your game sense is a strength compared to your other skills. However, it's the opposite if you're great in solos but struggle in modes like duos, trios, or squads. Also, creative game modes like Zone Wars, Realistic Fights, and Box Fights are also great for improving game sense. All these non-standard Battle Royale game modes typically include a lot more action than what you'll find in solos, duos, or squads, and because of that, it's obviously great for improving your game sense because you have to deal with more chaotic situations. The next thing I want to talk about in this video is the importance of not letting your mind go idle while in fights. I was recently watching Bala TW do a VOD review on Benji Fishy, and he referred to what I'm talking about here as mental multitasking. One point he mentioned in that video I found really interesting was basically, when you watch the super smart players like Benji play, how often do you see them die because they run out of materials without realizing it, or they finish one fight and then lose the next one because their weapons aren't reloaded, or they get surprised by the storm and lose all their health before they make it out. Based on my experience watching those top players, it doesn't happen at all really. But on the flip side, when I watch more average skilled players play, those types of deaths are ridiculously common. And the thing is, it's so easy to blame factors outside of your control when you die in those ways. If you're build battling someone and you run out of mats halfway through, most people will go, dude, how does this guy have so many mats? If I had as many as him, I would have easily gotten that kill. Or bro, that's so stupid that the storm went max distance away, I would have lived there if it wasn't the worst safe zone possible. But the truth is, if you run out of mats in the middle of a fight, it's your fault for not recognizing earlier that you were low. You should have stopped build battling when you hit about 100 to 150 left, and then tried to use those mats to win a box fight. If you rotate late and get caught in the storm, it's your fault for not recognizing that and rotating earlier. Does bad luck play a part in it? Yeah, absolutely, but you're also partially to blame. And the reason why pros almost never die in those ways is because they're always processing information when they're playing. It's hard to tell in real time, especially because you can't just go into their mind, but it's crazy how many things top level players are checking and processing even in super chaotic situations. I compare it to those scenes in a movie where the airplane short circuits or something and the pilot's trying to avoid a crash. They're looking around and clicking a bunch of different buttons on the dashboard, they're constantly checking the altitude and the speed that they're falling at, and while all that's going on, the passengers are screaming at the top of their lungs in the background. That may sound like a weird comparison, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. 
Even during crazy build or edit fights where they're making a thousand motions at once, the players with really good game sense are always aware of their material count, where the storm is and when they have to move, the position of nearby enemies that could potentially third party, and so much more. So many people get tunnel vision in that situation and only focus on building, editing, or shooting. Or even worse, in less chaotic situations, they let their mind wander and think of random things not even related to Fortnite. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down the comment section below. I want to know, on a scale of 0 to 10, how do you rate your own personal game sense in Fortnite? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.